everyone, this is Princess Fer with more Final Fantasy XIV content, patch 6.55. Uh, we will carry on with um, Tataro's Grand Endeavor quest, and we're here, an old Charlian, and we'll talk to Magina. Treasured Bonds. Dude, I have wonderful news! Thanks to your tireless deliveries, we are now overwhelmed with orders. Mr. Sataru's plan was a success. That's another shipment sent. I don't think I've ever packed so many parcels in my life. Incredible memory you must have to remember once such as I. Ah, but I don't think we were ever properly introduced. My name is Hasdad. I was among those who traveled here from Palakastan by way of Golemal during the final days. You and your comrades ensured our safe arrival. I've been working at Tataris Terrace Boutique with Magina and Varsarada. I'll buy it behind the scenes. It's rare that I have occasion to visit the storefront. An unfortunate side effect of the constant demands of all our staff. Though I think we would all agree that the hustle and bustle is for the best. But don't you wonder what we'll do once the samples have served their purpose? Our equipment is crafted to last, which is wonderful of course, but also means that our customers are not likely to require replacements for some time. Therefore, if we are not constantly receiving new customers, our good fortune will eventually sour, no? Mr. Stataro isn't so foolish as to have not anticipated such things. I'm sure she's already coming up with new and exciting products to offer our existing clients. Uh, actually, I had an idea of my own. For a new product, I mean. In fact, I presented it to Mr. Stataro just the other day. A new uniform to outfit the academics and researchers of Charlie. Oh, how enterprising! And what did she say? Well, she seemed hesitant, which I could only interpret as reluctance to hurt my feelings with explicit rejection. But then she told me to look into it further and draft a formal proposal for review. That's wonderful, Magina! When she said to look into it further, did she mean for you to conduct some matter of market survey on the academics and researchers? Uh, just so, but... Well, some are involved in such sensitive work that simply approaching them is out of the question. Which is to say my petition to enter Labyrinthus was denied. Instead, I decided to try to study them. Secretarial Mehmet was only too happy to schedule a meeting with an academic representative. But now that it's come down to it, I'm feeling ill with nerves. If it were on Mr. Sataru's behalf, it would be different. But this was my initiative. My idea. I'd offer to accompany you, but I have to mind the counter. Perhaps you could offer Medina your support. I'd like to start thinking of what supplies we'll need for artisans once you, your plan is approved. Of course, very well then. To the studio where we go.
find a shortcut. Meeting is here. I'm sure they will be long shortly. Hmm. Hello, representatives from Tataru Taru's boutique, I presume. Oh, Jude! What a pleasant surprise! Though I suppose your presence should merit not shock at all, given the breadth of your generosity. make your acquaintance. My name is Medina, um, and I am ever so obliged to you for making the time to speak with us. She only a poet in service. There's no need to stand on ceremony, I assure you. Most of our academics are far more concerned with their research than pleasantries. Admittedly, to their detriment at times. Anyway, how may I help you this morning? For our academics and research, as you say. I myself am ill equipped to offer an authoritative opinion on the matter, so permit me to arrange some meetings with fac faculty representatives. Straight away? Please make yourselves comfortable in the auditorium while I go and summon a few of our more personable personnel. bring well in the faculty of archaeology we spend much of our time traipsing about ancient ruins which often ends up ruining our clothes if you'll pardon the pun an outfit durable enough to handle extended use would be welcome. But it would need to be lightweight and breathable as well. Equatorial deserts can be most taxing. Then again, you'd be surprised just how many relics are hidden at the bottom of lakes. And northern waters can get quite chilly. As it stands, my colleagues and I throw in any old thing for our field work. Whatever we have on hand that is suitable for the conditions. With the understanding it may need to be disposed of afterwards. Funding for research equipment and the like is precious enough as it is. And we can't afford to have dozens of bespoke garments for every situation. Which is probably not what you were hoping to hear, I realize. No, thank you for your candor. It's true, new kit can be rather expensive. We must ensure our prices stay affordable. The ideal outfit for astronomers. How in the world am I to answer that? 
I know less than nothing about fashion. Um, well, I suppose we astronomers often conduct our celestial observations from localities remote and subsequently chilly. You know, mountaintops and the like. So, something warm? If warm is truly their only requirement, then I think it's safe to say this is the opposite of an untapped market niche. The Faculty of Medicine has strict requirements for dress on account of hygiene regulations. Fabrics that are resistant to stains and possess antibacterial properties are a must, for example. Additionally, we students of nutritional sciences must vigorously dart about the kitchen, so dressing for comfort is nearly as essential as cleanliness. And if it were fashionable enough to perhaps inspire others to follow in our footsteps, all the better. Ah, we require no such clothing in the Faculty of Anthropology, for we make all that we require right here. Rather, Professor Tankin prefers to do so, that he may better understand how necessity begets innovation. I can't say I completely agree with the logic, though. I suppose I've grown to appreciate his sense of aesthetics now that the Professor and I are, um, but, but uh, that has little bearing on your project. That ameliorates heath a thickness, without a doubt. You think we at the faculty of ethology would have developed such an outfit by now, no? But alas, our primary project is to demand every moment we possess. We cannot afford to divide our resources. They're all crazy. Oh, what will they do? Well, how did you go? Um, I, I don't know, to be honest. Everyone has such different preferences that I'm not sure it's, if it's even possible to satisfy them all. A fair concern. The studium's fa faculties are filled with opinionated individuals, each with their own peculiarities. Additionally, our academics spend much of their time engaged in fieldwork as opposed to seminars, which further complicates stipulations of dress. In other words, we have our work cut out for us. Indeed. It was naive to assume that one type of uniform could account for the needs of all academics. We had best return to the boutique. Thank you for your assistance, Mr. Aliepo. Prepare different outfits for the several departments, perhaps. Mm, she's giving me Yote vibes. And I truly thought I had a good idea. No doubt Mr. Chataru knew it's folly, but had me research it regardless, so that I might reach the conclusion on my own. She meant well, I am sure. See how the hardships make you strong. I believe I've heard that expression before, but where? Perhaps in Thafnir? It comes from the teachings bestowed upon us by the old gods. Many of us took comfort in the words during the final days. After we fled Palaka's stand. You may have heard it spoken then.
When we call upon the divinities, it is not to beg for salvation, but for guidance. So long as we live by their teachings, there is no hardship we cannot overcome. This is a core tenet of Hanish faith that has seen us through much adversity since the founding of our nation. It is as you say, Ashdod. Yet, till you did, it did not occur to me to consider how they might apply to my personal struggle. Coming to Charlien and working with, working with Mistress Tataru at the boutique, I have met so many peoples from all sorts of cultures. But in trying so hard to accommodate their wants and needs, I fear my own heritage has become an afterthought. There is no shame in dedicating yourself to your work. And as we all have our limits, compromise and sacrifice are inevitable. It may surprise you, but once I aspired to become a steward, to look back on it now, it feels fanciful. Strange that we so easily let our dreams be cast aside by circumstance. I swore nothing would stand between me and my chosen path, and yet, here I am. I know the divinities will guide us wheresoever we go, but what if we stray too far? Would I be a fool to suggest that perhaps we should return to Thavner? But Mr. Sotaro has done so much for us. We cannot simply leave the boutique on a moment's notice. Maybe not. But what of our family and friends? It is one thing for us to send money and well wishes, but I wonder if we could not do more if we were there helping to rebuild. We haven't been back to the village since the final days. And if we are already forgetting our old lives... I don't know. I just think Mistress Tataru should know how we feel, is all. Hard, so I, I bet she'll understand that, but she'll probably need people, more people to help her out. Since business is booming. about returning to Thavner, she said she'd need time to consider. For my part at least, I think consulting with Mrs. Tatara will help put my mind at ease. Okay, let's see what happens. There she is. My, what a busy counter we have today! How sad! It's good to see you out from behind your usual shipping crates. Yes, I I thought I'd come and help Magina with her research. I've just returned from interviewing academics at the studio. Up about that, uh, Mrs. Totaru. Suffice it to say, their requirements were all radically different. I know I said a uniform for researchers and academics, but I'm afraid I might have deeply underestimated the feasibility of such a project. I 
And that's perfectly alright. The important thing is to learn from what you discover so you can retain and apply that knowledge as you continue on your entrepreneurial journey. The right idea for a new product will find us when it's ready. In the meantime, I have more samples in need of delivery and seeing as Jude is very conveniently standing within my line of sight... A, a thousand pardons, Mrs. Tataru, but, but before you, you continue, I wish to speak with you about a personal matter. You have shown us incredible charity, which makes this all the more difficult to ask, but I wonder if I should return home to Thavna. Please do not mistake this as dissatisfaction with our arrangement. If anything, I've grown so accustomed to life in Charlion that I feel I've begun to forget myself. My dreams and my faith. The person I used to be before I came here. Not only that, in spite of my regular remittances, I worry that our village struggles to rebuild after the final days. While I live happily removed from a burden I ought to share more. I feel disingenuous. To both my home and the many kindnesses you continue to show us. I see. And do you both feel the same? I've been so devoted to my work that I hadn't given much thought to returning until Harstad mentioned it. But to claim that I'm not worried about the village would be a lie. While I am a similar mind to Medina, I must nevertheless remain here. Among under reasons, there is a project I am resolved to complete. Well, I would say I would be very sorry to see any of you go, but if remaining here causes you grief, I will spare no effort to see you safely home. Which is why I have decided that our next set of samples shall be delivered to Malacca Stand. Furthermore, I ask that those who wish to visit accompany Jude on his errand. Seeing how your village fares is no doubt the best thing for you both right now. It will help you to understand your feelings, after which we may proceed howsoever you desire. And should your colleagues require it, I'm sure you can be relied upon to dispense the perfect advice. Medina, Ashdad, give everyone my regards. Then it's settled. I'll begin preparing the samples at once. Allow me to assist. No matter what happens, we must finish Mr. Stataru's necklace. Are we ready to proceed with the restoration, do you think? I dare say we have enough additional materials thanks to Jude's dedication. As for the work itself, I thought we could entrust it to the lapidary Mr. Stataru once apprenticed with. I'm sure that will mean a lot to Tataru. I'm glad you think so as well. Let's leave the necklace in Varsa Roots capable hands and join us out in Scholar's Arbor. Alright, here we go.
I remember when we first set foot upon these docks. After a long, exhausting journey through frozen wastes, after surviving those horrid beasts, Mr. Tataro was a warm beacon of light. Working at the boutique has helped us to rebuild our lives, but I will never forget that feeling of powerlessness. Should I have stayed in Palakistan and tried to defend my people? Was I a coward to flee? Is it a betrayal to my home and to myself to remain here? I can't stop thinking in circles. Anyway, I'm glad that for this opportunity to better understand where my heart truly lies. All will be well, I'm sure. But we must be off lest we miss our connecting flight. We're truly back in Tavle! Was Razatan always this grand? I can't believe we lived so close yet so rarely made a trip. You remember how it was. Village duties always kept us all too busy for travel. Defending pilgrims was trying enough for the stewards even before the final days. I wonder how many temple roads are still traversable. If even those in Razatan struggle to travel for worship. Our feelings of estrangement may be more common than we think. Since we've come all this way, would you mind terribly if Azad and I toured the city on our own? Let's plan to meet in Palaka San and on. There they are. Home at last! Yes, home. I can finally breathe again. Come, let's go and find the Elder. The Eurovet, Ardad, Medina, how wonderful it is to see you. I've been so, so worried. Tell me, how is life in Charlian? Are you being treated well? Oh, yes, Elda, our employer, Mr. Sotaro, is the kindest of businesswomen. In fact, she arranged for us to accompany Jude on his errand here, so we might enjoy some time at home. That is very good of her indeed. I am relieved to hear her being looked after. You 
you are ever a guardian to our people. Thank you for seeing these children safely home. Now then, what is this errand you speak of? How splendid! Our steward shall put this to good use, you may be assured. If only we could repay your generosity with something even half as marvelous. Alas, our village... Ours is a village of little extravagance. Everything seems as ever it was. Indeed, with the support of the Radiant Host and the funds you and others have sent, we have regained much of the peace we once knew. Thank the sisters. Still, there was something I wish to speak with you about, Elda. You are worried your heart grows distant from Thavnir, that you have wandered too far from home. But my child, it is only right that you should wander, that you should roam. Your heart's connection endures no matter where you go. You yet think of us fondly enough to visit, yes? And send us what kill you can spare, do you not? Justice perhaps, but not true commitment. Should I not be here with all of you, working to restore our village? There is no restoring our village, Asdard. Without those we lost, Palaka's stand will never be what it was. You must indeed instead do all we can to become a new village, with a new future ahead of us. Although the particulars of our path are not yet clear to me. How so? Ours has always been a settlement of stewards, as well, you know, tasked with the protection and preservation of Tazna's sacred sites. But we have seen our roads shaken and temples defiled by beasts. The material is not always within our ability to protect. What is everlasting is our faith, the bonds between our people and the divine. Through the old teachings we remind ourselves of life's meaning. Yet, if we wish to ensure our traditions endure for generations to come, should we not strive to do more than maintain our temples until pilgrims deign to visit? Ah, but I do not wish to tire you with an old man's musings. Surely there are other ways of ensuring our people remain connected to their heritage and faith. All we need is the right idea. Something new our village could offer. Well, well. My word seems to have inspired you. And with the worldly insights you have gained, I am sure any future you envision for Palaka's stand will be nothing short of remarkable. But there is no need to rush. Take some time to speak with the others and make yourselves at home. Precious than Gil. How foolish I was to think the answer would be so simple. I would come home, roll up my sleeves, and help restore our village to the way it was. I would find fulfillment. Alas, not all that was lost can be reclaimed. Our people face a new struggle, but perhaps by discovering new ways for the village to fulfill its duty, we might help our community. Exactly, like the Elder said, surely our experiences in Charlion have given us a unique perspective. Not to mention Jew's extensive knowledge of the world. I'm sure that between the three of us, we can come up with a brilliant plan to support Palakistan. Yes, yes you are right.
and I am sure that hearing how everyone fares will give us insights as well.
been a while. Yes, but we made it. I'm home. Here, at Perusa, we may commune with the spirits of the departed. Neither Machina nor my parents survived the final days. I told them about how you saved us, and that we are doing well. I know they will rest easier for it. May the next time we visit to beat to deliver glad tidings from Palakistan. Though I was relieved to find a village in a better state than I had feared, it seems there are still issues we might help address. Finding a steady source of income, for instance, so the stewards can be properly outfitted without overwhelming our weaver. I was also troubled to hear about those who continue to struggle without the support of a local community. There must be some way to provide respite. Yes, indeed. The question is what? Do you have any thoughts? Never underestimate the power of a partnership. Indeed, Mr. Taro's developed a boutique through close partnerships after all. And look how far it's come! Wait! That's it. If Palakistan were to enter into a partnership with a boutique, that might lead to great opportunities. I think you're onto something. If the boutique sold wares the village produced, for instance, our people would have a reliable revenue stream. But what can Palakistan offer and to whom? How about amulets and talismans? Or images of the deities? Something simple, created with love for our homeland and our faith, so no one forgets and feels forgotten. Or feels forgotten. I like that. Our temples were created in remembrance of our ancestors and divine teachings. But reminders needn't only take the form of great works. A small keepsake may be just what our scattered brethren need to reassure themselves that they are still members of the community. This could be the answer we were looking for. I can't wait to tell Mr. Sotaru. Brother, I can't wait for you to tell Mr. Sotaru, Regina. It was your idea after all. Ah, a deep effort, let us say. I certainly couldn't have come up with it without you and you. If our proposal is approved, Mr. Sotaro will no doubt need assistance in Charlian. I am ready and willing to provide it, but what have you asked that? What will you do? I too will return to the boutique. One day I will come home to stay, but for now, I wish to do all in my power to help our village thrive. I am relieved to hear you say so. Let us go and consult with the Elder about our plan.
I uh, hear you were kind enough to escort these children to Perusa. Again, you have my gratitude. Are your feelings any clearer for it? I think so. Medina and I talked it over, and we believe we have struck upon a new way the village might support our people. Tangible mementos of our faith. An interesting proposition. Many here would be glad to create such reminders. I expect those unable to perform strenuous labor would be spe specially grateful for an opportunity to contribute to the prosperity of our village. To say nothing of the options these additional funds would provide. But most importantly, we would be able to help those who have chosen to live apart from us feel that much more connected to their community and their faith. I am proud of you both for describing such an innovative way to do so. It will likely mean our start and I will stay in Charlien for the foreseeable future. Then take with you the knowledge that no matter where your journey takes you, our hearts will always be as one. May the sisters guide you. We'll come back again, I promise. In the meantime, we shall see our plan to fruition. I will send word once we've determined the particulars. Right then. Charlie and awaits. Back from the lapidary. We had nothing but fond memories of Mr. Stantaro and was eager to pour his everything into the restoration. The result is magnificent. The original sapphire accented with black pearl from the ruby sea and rose shell of Wellet, united by a lens of maquilletta, a singular necklace symbolizing Mr. Stantaro's past and present. My sisters, what a remarkable gift! However, it wants for a finishing touch. Preferably by your hand, Jude. And after hearing about your visit to Palaka Stand, I know just the thing. In short, we will be proposing a new line of products to help our people feel closer to their roots, yes? So, in honor of Mr. Sotaru's roots, I would have you inscribe the symbol of Nardals upon the back of the pendant. No thought. It would be an honor.
<laughs> mm, I'm sure she will adore it. Our work is officially done. I've just received word from Mr. Sotaru. She should be arriving in Scholar's Harbor soon. Let's go and meet her there. accustomed to it. How was your time in Palaka stand? Did you find it worthwhile? Hmm. So while they do have interest in our equipment, Matters of recovery are their greater concern at present. Recovery, yes, but also growth, which may lead to a lucrative opportunity for the boutique. If you will permit me to suggest another new product. What if we offered handicrafts designed and produced by the people of Palaka Stand? Authentic works representative of Hanis culture. For those of us living abroad, reminders of home would do wonders to ease feelings of estrangement, and for others, such pieces could be appreciated as beautiful works of art. Our village is up to the task. You will not be disappointed. Tap not a conviction, Mr. Sotaru. Product that embodies Savna's spiritual beauty to be shared with the whole world. Why the boutique should offer nothing less? Though we've made wonderful progress with our samples, I believe it's time for a change of pace. And handicrafts born from a heartfelt desire to celebrate one's culture is bound to resonate with others. Given her eagerness, I presume Regina intends to stay and help facilitate this new venture? But what about you, Hasdad? You felt a call to return to Thavna rather more strongly, as I recall. Yes, well, after talking with everyone at home, I realize that living apart from them does not mean I must forsake my childhood dreams of service. I believe I can best serve my people by staying in Charlion and continuing to work at the boutique, if you'll have me. It's a pleasure, Astad. Mr. Sotaro, if it would not be untoward, we would like to present you with a small token of our appreciation for everything you've done for us. at all. Rest assured that I graciously accept all offerings of praise and adoration, especially ones as fine as this. But how queer! The sapphire looks remarkably like the one my... Jude, is this... is this my mother's sapphire? Hers, so now rightfully yours. It's hers! It's really hers! 
never in my life did I imagine I'd see this jewel again. It was part of a family heirloom. When my mother was married, she received it from her mother. How her eyes sparkled when she spoke of one day giving it to me, I'll never forget. But when father's business failed, we lost everything. And that was the last I saw of it. Though your heirloom did not survive in its entirety, Master Pippin managed to recover the sapphire. From there we collected parts from clients during sample deliveries and commissioned the necklace you now hold. Now that I think of it, Jude often did receive mysterious gifts on those visits. So that's what it was about. Time after time I am reminded that a fortune in coin promises only a fraction of what a wealth of friendship provides. My family lost its last skill. I became a lapidary's apprentice. And that's how I met a certain miner named Menthelia. We hit it off instantly, chatting every time she brought in gems for appraisal. And then, one day she came not with her usual haul, but with an invitation to join the Path of the Twelve. The rest, as they say, is history. One serendipitous meeting that led to so many others, that led to so many incredible adventures. That saw poor little girl reunited with a priceless memento. Our teachings say that there is more ugliness than beauty in this world. To live is to suffer. But we never need to suffer alone. And what is more beautiful than the bonds we share with others? Indeed, it is these connections that give meaning to our lives. Connections for which I too am grateful and thus compelled to advise that we return to the Agora. The counter remains unmanned and we mustn't neglect our clients. Quite right, quite right. Back to work with a lot of us. We've got new products to plan. On behalf of the entire boutique, allow me to thank you for all you have done. I am ashamed to admit that in our excitement to prepare Mr. Sotaro's surprise, Varsarod and I failed to prepare something for you. And that sounds like the cue for Mr. Sotaro. <laughs> embark upon another journey to the corners of the world unknown, as he is wont to do. So to wish you well in making new friends and to remind you of those who will always hold you in their hearts, I have prepared Bespoke Chocobo Morning, crafted with love by one Tataru Taru. A Chocobo Morning. Oh, that's awesome.
dare say the boutique will be embarking upon its own adventure in the coming days. And with true adventure invariably comes tribulation. But with your compassion, resourcefulness and reliability, I have every confidence that we shall succeed in our respective endeavors. To, higher, to ever higher returns of both coin and camaraderie. Oh, and don't think just because you're running off to the other side of the world that I don't intend to solicit your future involvement, Jude. You won't escape me that easily. And that's it for the Tataro's Great Endeavor quest. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, once again, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. This is Princess Fern signing out. Take care and good gaming. Bye bye.